Hello and welcome back to episode four of Home Bar Basics. And as I said last week, it was all going to be about ice. Mm. <sighs> Unfortunately, something come up. We just couldn't get the ice to work. Next episode though, episode five, drop it down. So much ice. I am going to be shivering. Oh, I can't wait. This episode, however, is going to be a belter. It's episode four of the Home Bar Basics, and we're looking at bitters and syrups. Bitters and syrups play a key part in any cocktail. When you're getting into mixing your own cocktails and just making cocktails generally from recipes that you may see, you'll see quite a lot of the time them calling for certain bitters and certain syrups. I think it's time to debunk a lot of the myths that come along with this and also give you some recommendations for what you should definitely have in your home bar. I'll pop this to the side and we will, we'll come back to that very shortly. But for now, we're gonna talk about the bitters. I've got a few lined up in front of me here. There's so many bitters available on the market. If you are mashed malt, if you are any of your online retailers, you will see a category of bitters. But what are bitters? Well, long story short, and just as a brief synopsis, bitters are really intense tinctures of flavor, which tend to have a quite deep bitter aftertaste. They're really good at seasoning cocktails, although saline solution is great too, but they're really good at opening flavors within spirits. They can act as a bridge, between two completely different spirits and liqueurs and different flavors, they're a really useful tool in any bartender's arsenal. And even a home bartender really should be using at least some basic bitters in their drinks. As I said, I've got a huge amount of bitters in the collection and you're not always gonna need some niche ginger bitters. You're not always gonna need a non-alcoholic bitters, uh, which are usually quite poor anyway. You're not gonna need some crazy strawberry and kiwi bitters, although they are delicious, but there are some bitters that you are definitely going to need. I've lined up a few that I think are essential. There's four here, although it looks like five. These are both chocolate, but I've actually lined them up roughly into two groups. The absolute essentials and the ones that were so close to being essential that they've sort of now got their own category. So, We've got, in the red corner, Angostura bitters. Well, this is a bitters dasher that I've decanted them into because I use them so much. Uh, I like to have my own sort of decant uh, for the bitters, just so I can get reliable dashes each time. This, by far, out of any bitters you can buy, will be the one that is called for most in cocktail recipes. Whether it's classic or modern, Angostura bitters are essential. They have this cloviness to them, a very aromatic spice note. I love. Angostura bitters. Angostura products in general are generally fantastic. They also do orange and chocolate bitters, which are quite new, but you cannot beat the classic aromatic bitters from Angostura. These, <laughs> whenever you see a cocktail recipe and it recommends aromatic bitters, for example, I guarantee that cocktail has been designed and tested with Ango in mind. These are, without a shadow of a doubt, the number one option. You need to get Angostura bitters in your collection and improve your old fashions. Improve your garnish game by having a few strikes or even a spray on top of a drink. Make some weird and wacky cocktails with the Angost with the Trinidad Sour. This is a phenomenal product and one that you need. Definitely number one, Angostura bitters. Number two is a bit of a tighter call. I've got some orange bitters here. Um, this is Regan's orange bitters. I also really enjoy uh, Fee Brothers as well. Either of them are quite tasty. They've got a the fresh orange nose and obviously this bitter aftertaste, as you'd expect. But one thing I like to do is to put 50-50 of these into a decanter and use that as a house orange bitters. You'll see many bars uh, in, in their recipe book, Smuggler's Cove being one, having their home recipe for bitters. And it doesn't necessarily always <laughs> turn out to be a home recipe. It tends to be just a ratio between two bitter brands that they really like, that they pop in a decanter and use for their quick dasher. 
as I have with the Angus Laura Bitters. Orange bitters are a fantastic way to add a bit of brightness and character to a cocktail. They're not as heavy and rich and deep as the Angus Laura Bitters, but they play a different role. A couple of dashes in a Negroni work phenomenal. A couple of dashes, even in a martini, play really well. Orange bitters can be used in an awful lot of cocktails, and many cocktails, to be fair, classic and more modern cocktails, still call for orange bitters. So that's a potential for number two, but it's got stiff competition. Peychaud's. Peychaud's bitters run orange very close for the number two spot. I'd potentially put these there ahead of the orange bitters, personally. It depends on the style of cocktail that you're going to be making. If you like your really classic, old worldy stirred cocktails, like the Sazerac, you're going to need Peychaud's bitters. And it's a key component with four or five dashes in some cases used in the cocktail. It also works really well in a seal bath, we have seven dashes of this and seven dashes of mango paired together, topped under the bubbly, it's a fantastic cocktail. Peychaud's fall more closely to mango than they do orange. Orange is a defined light flavour, these are more aromatic. Lighter than the mango, but still an aromatic category of bitter. I really enjoy Peychaud's. They work great as a garnish with their bright red colour, and this deep sort of star anise clove note that runs through them comes across very light compared to the Ango. Really tasty and more subtle. It's a nice go-between from the light and floral, in many ways, bitters that you can buy, and the deeper, richer spiced bitters. Peychaud's is a fantastic option, and one that I always have a full bottle of. Quite brief, quite short, quite snappy. I wanted to get through the three essentials on the bitters relatively quickly. So I could talk about a few other options. Now, it may not be bar basics, but for me, I think bitters are an essential part of a bar, and it's why I've got a couple of uh, different chocolate bitters here as well. They very nearly had an argument for replacing both the orange and the Peugeot, but the, the history behind the orange and Peugeot and the, the use in classic cocktails meant that I couldn't really usurp any of them for the chocolate. I do think a cho good chocolate bitters improves more cocktails than the orange and the Peychaud's personally and it might be quite controversial tea but I think any rum or whiskey cocktail the dash or two of chocolate bitters it will be better mezcal as well works fantastically with the chocolate bitters and a special martini with a few dashes of chocolate bitters it brings out some of the flavours in the smokiness of the mezcal the bitterness of the coffee is rounded off and sort of replaced with this chocolatey bitterness. If you add it to an old fashioned, the whiskey takes on a whole new profile, or, or the rum in certain stirred rum cocktails, uh, Boulevardier with a few dashes of chocolate bitters is fantastic. I could go on and on and on and truly wax lyrical about chocolate bitters. Whether you're gonna go with Scrappies, which I really, really enjoy, or something like this from Fee Brothers with the Aztec chocolate bitters, they're not bad products, they're, they're, they're fantastic choices for the whole bar. Other notable mentions that I'm gonna reel off quite quickly. Grapefruit bitters, a really nice touch for a light martini and floral drinks. Even a Paloma margarita works really well with grapefruit. Celery bitters are quite a unique one as they add this weird sort of hint of heat, but quite a lot of savory umami notes as well and work lovely in a dirty martini or even a really dry martini too. You've also got some really out there bitters. Uh, Betters bitters do some fantastic, strange bitters. Sumac and kiwi, uh, green strawberry, pineapple and star anise from Betters bitters is phenomenally good. But they are definitely more niche and you need certain cocktails in mind really to justify going out and buying them. Um, I'm very lucky uh, to have a great relationship with Better's Bitters, which means I've got full access to their range. And I have to say they are phenomenal. But they don't open as many doors as these three here, or a good quality chocolate bitters. One thing that's worth noting is that Better's Bitters do a chocolate bitters, and that is also phenomenal. One elephant in the room I've not mentioned, because it doesn't really fall into bitters, but the, the Miraculous Foma from Better's Bitters. A way of creating these fluffy, silky cocktails a la egg white without using the egg white. I love it. It's more consistent for the home use. You're not worried about eggs that may not be 100% fresh. You don't need to do a reverse dry shake. You can just do one shake with ice and it'll get really frothy and lovely. I never do a dry shake first. I never do a reverse dry shake. I shake with ice. 
that's it. That is enough for a frothy, silky, egg white style cocktail using the Miraculous Fogma from Better Bitters. I would actually highly implore you to get that. They are fantastic. But I digress. We talked a little bit about bitters now. This is one way you can change a cocktail. You can modify it by adding a flavour and a bit of a dark, deep bitterness and a, a change on the palate to open up the world of flavour. But it's not the only way you can balance a cocktail. Sometimes a cocktail might be too tart or too bitter and you want something to take the edge off. You might need a bit of sugar. And just like magic, we have sugar. An elephant in the room has presented itself. I have in front of me some pre-made syrups, which if you followed any trends on Instagram or anyone in the bar industry for the last year, two years, pre-made syrups are the devil and should not be used at all. They're not actually that bad. Monin has an unbelievable range of syrups. And for bar basics, do you really want to be going out and making your own hibiscus syrup, your own peach syrup, your own kiwi syrup, mango, pink peppercorn, maybe. And more power to you if you do. I know for me and R&D, when I'm making cocktails, it's much quicker to use these syrups first to see if there's anything good in the original idea for a cocktail. And then after that, make my own syrup. But I'll always start using the morning syrups. And I'll be honest, a lot of the times, especially this gum syrup, this makes about a nine, nine and a half out of 10 daiquiri. Perfect, it's got more body to it. It's this really rich syrup and it's, it does the job. It does exactly what you need from it. Likewise, the honey syrup here. Honey on its own can't be used in cocktails. It's too thick, it's too viscous and it'll incorporate properly. The way to do that is just water it down a little bit with boiling water until you get the viscosity you're after. Or just, just buy this honey syrup. Home is always best. Social media wasn't lying to you on that one. But what I think is overblown is the story that home is the only option. Because it's not. This is an absolutely fine honey syrup. It's sweet and tastes like honey and mix as well with cocktails. I make a lot of home syrups. I am a big champion of making wacky home syrups because it's really easy to do so. But one thing it does take is, is time. Just because it's easy doesn't mean it's necessarily quick. And for a lot of people, you need quick, you need accessible. These are quick and accessible. So that is one thing I'm gonna say straight away about syrups. This video is bar basics. I'm not gonna be making loads of syrups today. I'm gonna show you what I think you need to stop. And you need a form of simple syrup, and you need maybe honey syrup, some fruity syrups, maybe raspberry syrup, if you wanna go clover clubs without fresh raspberries, grenadine for some tiki drinks, maybe a cinnamon syrup for some tiki drinks. All of these are available from Monin, or Liber & Co, or if you're in the UK, William Fox, or Bristol syrups. They're all available, and they're all great products. So give them a go before making whole, to just see if you like them. It's I'm sick of the gatekeeping in the community. And if you want to use some pre-made syrups, go for it. If that's how you like to enjoy your cocktails, don't let anyone tell you anything else. For the people who are slightly interested in going the slight extra mile, even in the basics, I've got a bag of Demerara sugar and a bag of just normal granulated sugar. Just to talk you through some things that may come up when you're reading about cocktails and seeing cocktail specs. If your drink calls for simple syrup, what that actually is calling for is one part water and one part white plain sugar. Whether it be cane sugar, granulated sugar, caster sugar, whatever. It's a home bar basics. We're going really strip back. It's, it's nothing more than necessary. The important thing to note, even in the basics, is that if you do make your own simple syrup, one part water to one part sugar, you want to be doing this by weight, not by volume. The densities in sugar and water are very different, so ensure that you do this by weight. Grab some scales, weigh out maybe 100 gram of your granulated sugar or cane sugar, and then do the same with the water. Add them together over low heat, gentle simmer, give it a stir until the sugar is in solution, and there you have a very basic one-to-one -one simple syrup. What you may also see is the call for a Demerara syrup. Really easy, same technique. You're just gonna be using Demerara sugar instead of uh, cane sugar or granulated. But what about if it calls for a rich simple syrup? This is not a high earner. <laughs> if it calls for rich simple syrup, 
it's just a tweak in the ratio. A rich simple or a rich demerara is gonna be a two to one. So again, make sure it's by weight and not by volume. Two parts sugar to one part water. Low heat and give it more of a stir. It might take a little bit of time, a little bit longer to go into solution. And you might get this slightly thicker syrup, but that's perfectly fine. That rich, simple syrup is gonna be called for a lot in your, your tiki drinks. The drinks that have got a lot more going on and need a little bit more body about them. For me, I like to pair Demerara sugar and Demerara syrup, whether it be rich or simple, with spirits that really complement that deeper, darker, more treacly notes that you get from brown sugar. So quite clearly, I'm talking about rums. Rums go really well with Demerara sugar. Um, I love using a rum from Guiana, this real treacly Demerara rum paired with the dark Demerara syrup, especially a rich Demerara syrup. It's absolutely delicious. Whereas if I was doing a, um, a white lady, for example, and I wanted Cointreau and simple syrup paired with gin, it's a lighter body, it, it's less powerful, it's less deep. So I'm gonna use the granulated or cane sugar in that scenario. And you're gonna get a slightly better pairing in terms of flavor profile. The syrups you add, yes, they provide sweetness. But some sugars you use have got a bit more flavor about them too, and they've got more going on, especially when you get into like honey syrups or um, even just infused cinnamon syrups, which again, if you wanna make a whole nine times out of 10, you can just, when you're making the syrups in the pan, add a few bits to it whilst it's simmering. And that's all you need to do, strain that off and then you've got your home syrup. So they are relatively easy, um, but I would go morning first. There's also different ways of making syrups and we'll go into that when we do the advanced techniques for, for home bar. Maceration, literally just covering your fruit in sugar and leaving it for a week. It's a brilliant way of just drawing so much of the fresh juice out of the fruit. And then that combines, the, the juice combines then with the sugar goes into solution and you get this juicy, lovely syrup. And I'll actually step-by-step step make some syrups, which will be quite interesting. As I said, today's gonna be quite a short, packed together video. Just a quick rundown, really, on what was in front of us today. As for me, this is an important aspect of cocktails. But again, not something I want to bombard you with at the start. Your choice of spirits, your good equipment, and a basic selection of bitters and syrups is gonna be really important. I'd rather have good bottles, glassware and good equipment over really good syrups and bitters. They are more of a prerequisite to a great cocktail. These, although very important, help a cocktail out to seven or an eight, get to a nine and nine and a half because there's no such thing as a ten cocktail. In the next episode, we're gonna actually show you how to make an original cocktail. I'm not gonna talk about ice. In the next few episodes, one I'm gonna end on after we've covered ice, of course, is what I like to call the golden ratio, two, one, one. And it's a way I devise many of my cocktails. So as we progress through the very beginning of Home Bar Basics with your equipment, into the bottles, into the glassware, into where we are now with syrups and bitters, the next step really is, uh, after ice, talking about how to actually manufacture this into a cocktail. So it's gonna be very interesting to jump into that, have a deep dive, but that's a few weeks away. Yeah. Next week is the biggie. We're gonna be playing with water that's very very cold or steam that's incredibly cold or ice that's at its normal temperature ice next week we're finally doing it i know it was supposed to be episode two and then it's supposed to be episode three and then it's supposed to be this episode and it may seem like the ice episode's never coming it is and why would we be doing a video all on ice that's because ice controls the dilution of a cocktail. Ice chills a cocktail, it really enhances the experience that you're getting. Unless you're getting hot serve, in which case, mm, ice. Don't sleep on ice, you might get frostbite. That's all for today. If you like this video, feel free to click the subscribe button and even the little bell icon so that when we do the ice video next week, you're gonna be notified what a world you live in. If you wanna see more content from this divvy right here, then you can always go on to Speakeasy at UK on Instagram or Bohemian Mythology on Instagram, where I'll be posting daily cocktail content, some stuff like this, and let's be honest, not really anything like this at all, because you just want recipes for some reason. It's been an absolute pleasure. I am going to make myself a lovely cup of coffee, as it's now 25 to midnight, and I've still got another episode to film. I'll see you soon. 
kind of a 